Chapter 9 The Naughty Woodpecker Not many animals moved into the hollow, so it was quite a special day when Mr. and Mrs. Woodpecker and their son, young Walter, arrived. They were moving into a large beech tree on the edge of the wood not very far from where Mr. Squirrel lived. All the animals were excited about it and wanted to meet the new arrivals. Can I get you anything? asked Mrs. Waterfowl who had called on the woodpeckers. Oh, no, thank you, said Mrs. Woodpecker, popping her head out of a hole in the trunk of the beech tree. It's very nice of you to offer. That's quite all right, said Mrs. Waterfowl. I knew a Mrs. Woodpecker once. She lived on the edge of the Gred Wood away up north. You don't know her, do you? I don't think so, replied Mrs. Woodpecker. We come from down south. Oh, well, I won't keep you talking, said Mrs. Waterfowl. You must have a lot to do. You must meet young Walter, called Mrs. Woodpecker as Mrs. Waterfowl turned to go. Mrs. Woodpecker shouted something into the hole in the trunk and in a moment a small green head appeared with very bright and sparkling eyes. This is young Walter, said Mrs. Woodpecker. Say hello to Mrs. Waterfowl, Walter. Hello, Mrs. Waterfowl, young Walter said in a very polite voice and bowed his head. What a fine young fellow, said Mrs. Waterfowl wishing that some of her own children were as well-mannered as Walter. After Mrs. Waterfowl, many other animals called on the woodpeckers that day. They all wanted to help if they could. And, of course, they were all very curious to see the woodpeckers. What a nice family, said Mrs. Rabbit to Mrs. Mole when they met the next day. And what a polite creature young Walter is. Yes, said Mrs. Mole, I think they'll settle down very well in the hollow. On the next Sunday morning, Mr. Squirrel was sleeping late as he always did on Sundays. He was dreaming that he was about to eat the largest nut in the world. He heard a tapping noise. Mr. Squirrel thought he was still asleep and that the tapping was coming from inside the nut. Then, he woke up with a big jump. The tapping sounded much louder now and was coming from outside the tree. Good gracious, whatever is it? He asked out loud. He jumped out of bed and rushed into the kitchen. Did you hear that? He said to Mrs. Squirrel, who was busy making breakfast. What? she asked. That knocking sound, said Mr. Squirrel, looking quite annoyed at being woken up just in the middle of a lovely dream. No, said Mrs. Squirrel, I have been too busy to listen to knocking sounds. She was very glad that something had got Mr. Squirrel out of bed because usually she almost had to drag him out on Sundays. Well, you just come here and listen, said Mr. Squirrel and he marched back into the bedroom with his wife. All was silent. Mrs. Squirrel looked at her husband as if she was rather sorry for him. You've been dreaming, she said. Mr. Squirrel stood, and his whiskers were twitching as they always did when he was angry. But he was puzzled. I wasn't dreaming, he said out loud, though Mrs. Squirrel wasn't listening. She had gone back into the kitchen. Two other very strange things happened that morning. One happened to Mr. Badger and made him so cross that he shuffled out of his house, slammed the door, and came to tell Mr. Squirrel all about it. Mr. Squirrel, he shouted from the ground. Mr. Squirrel appeared on the branch with a piece of toast and a corn butter in his hand. Hello, Mr. Badger, he said with his mouth full. We don't usually see you out on Sundays. I want to know which rascal did it, shouted Mr. Badger in a worse temper than ever. I'll be having words with him. Mr. Squirrel had not seen Mr. Badger so angry before. He came down to his friend. Whatever is the matter, he asked. I will tell you what the matter is, shouted Mr. Badger with his eyes shining fiercely. Some scallywag has ruined my door. Mr. Squirrel knew that Mr. Badger was very proud of his house. Everything at Mr. Badger's home was neat and tidy.
and only the week before Mr. Badger had made a fine new door for his house and painted in bright green. Good heavens, said Mr. Squirrel. Mr. Badger was walking backwards and forwards stamping on the ground. He told his friend what had happened. He had been working away in his house that morning and had heard someone knocking at the door. The knocking went on and on, said Mr. Badger. Now, I don't like to be disturbed when I am working, and I was a bit cross. When I got to the door, there was nobody there. But, right in the middle of the door, someone had carved the wood. Mr. Badger stopped before he said any more. He was so furious that he looked as if he could burst at any moment. Someone had carved, he said again old badger I is a fool right in the middle of my new door. Mr. Squirrel almost laughed, but he knew that it was a very naughty thing that someone had done, and so he didn't. Besides, Mr. Badger was so angry he might think that he had done it. What a terrible thing, said Mr. Squirrel. Then, suddenly, he remembered the knocking that had woken him up. But, before he could say anything, Mr. Rabbit came leaping up the hill. I don't know who could have done it, he said. Not you as well, said Mr. Squirrel. Do you know, said Mr. Rabbit, very annoyed. A piece of my living room ceiling fell right off this morning. Even Mr. Badger smiled at this. It's not very funny, said Mr. Rabbit looking rather hurt as his two friends laughed. It was just as if somebody cut a piece out of the roof and dropped it into the living room. I am sorry, said Mr. Squirrel, but I can't help laughing. It is rather funny, you know. Mr. Badger's front door has been spoilt as well. Mr. Badger shook his grey head. Somebody has been playing tricks on us, he said. I wonder who it could be. Mr. Squirrel said nothing but a rather serious look came onto his face. He was thinking again of the knocking he had heard that morning. He walked around the tree trunk, looking at it very carefully. Oh, dear, he thought to himself. For there, halfway up the trunk, carved in the trunk, was a little drawing. It was of himself and had two very large teeth sticking out of the mouth. Mr. Squirrel said nothing to his friends, but he was also very annoyed. The three animals sat in the long grass and thought hard. No one in the hollow would do anything like this, said Mr. Badger grimly. Some animals can be naughty like young Mole. Or, my young John, said Mr. Rabbit. But, they wouldn't do anything like this. Mr. Squirrel had an idea of his own. But, as usual, he wouldn't tell his friends about it. He told them to go home, and he would do whatever he could. Later that morning, Mr. Squirrel wandered up towards the woods. He walked slowly and whistled cheerfully as if he hadn't care in the world. Before long, he saw Mr. Woodpecker with some soft green moss for the nest in his mouth. Hello, Mr. Woodpecker, he called out. Have you finished your nest yet? Oh, hello, Mr. Squirrel, said Mr. Woodpecker flying down. Very neatly. Just a little. More moss to line it, and then it will be finished. Mr. Squirrel chatted on happily about this and that for quite some time. Then, just as he was about to go, he told Mr. Woodpecker what had happened to Mr. Badger's door, Mr. Rabbit's roof, and his tree trunk. Mr. Woodpecker said nothing for a time. Then, he said very sadly, I thought that this would happen. It's young Walter who did it. He does it wherever we go. Do you know we always have to leave places because of the silly things young Walter does? Mr. Woodpecker looked very unhappy. Now, I suppose we will have to leave the hollow, he said. And the people here seem so nice. Oh no, said Mr. Squirrel, who felt very sorry for Mr. and Mrs. Woodpecker. You mustn't leave here. Perhaps we can do something about young Walter. Oh no, said Mr. Woodpecker. He is very naughty. Even his mother can do nothing with him. Perhaps you haven't done the right thing, said Mr. Squirrel, with the usual bright twinkle in his eyes. Now I have a little idea. He whispered in Mr. Woodpecker's ear. Mr. Woodpecker listened, and then a broad smile spread over his face. On the next day, Mr. Rabbit and Mr. Squirrel went up to Mr. Badger's house early. They were homing merrily. Soon, 
All three animals were busy at work putting a fine new door on Mr. Badger's home. It was even smarter than the old one. And when it was finished, Emma, Badger brought a large tin out of the house. Now we will paint it, he said and gave a large wink at Mr. Squirrel and another at Mr. Rabbit. All three of them laughed. When the painting was completed, the door was a fine bright red. The three animals stood back to admire it. That's a fine door, said Mr. Rabbit. Come inside, said Mr. Badger. Let's have some tea. He led the way inside and closed the door. Mr. Badger didn't even have time to pour the teapot when there was a bang at the door. But, only one bang this time and no more. Mr. Squirrel laughed and said, let's go and look at that fine door again. At the door was young Walter. Well, he wasn't really at it he was on it, stuck on it. As the door opened, young Walter swung in with it. His beak, wings and feet were stuck. That glue is very strong. Isn't it? said Mr. Squirrel. Now, Mr. Badger, would you bring a pair of your slippers? I think young Walter may have learned a little lesson. Young Walter couldn't say anything because his beak was stuck fast with glue. His eyes rolled about in his head. Mr. Rabbit was helpless with laughter. Don't worry, Walter, said Mr. Squirrel. Your father says this will be quite all right. At last, the three animals pulled young Walter off the door. He looked very sorry for himself. He was covered from head to foot in red paint, and his feathers were all stuck up with glue. Mr. Badger looked very sternly at young Walter. Now go home, he said. Your father is waiting, and don't be a nuisance again. Young Walter was miserable. He turned to walk home because until the paint and glue were washed out of his feathers, he couldn't fly. I think he's learned his lesson, don't you, said Mr. Squirrel brushing his whiskers and winking, let's go and finish the tea now.